everyone and welcome back to Sprinkle with Paper. Today I'm going to be sharing how to make a knockout design in Cricut Design Space. So basically a knockout design is when you combine two different designs into one by knocking out a portion of one of the images to fit in the second image. So it's kind of like creating a puzzle. And in today's video, I'll demonstrate exactly how to create your own by showing you how I made this cute football shirt for my daughter. The supplies I'll be using today are this really cute t-shirt that I found over at Hobby Lobby. I liked it because it had a little bit of a sporty feel to it. So I think technically it's a baseball shirt, but I thought it would be cute for football as well. It has some cute detailing on the arms and this line that goes across the chest. And I believe it was only $5. It was on sale. And then I'm also going to be using this gold shimmer iron-on, which this is the first time I've ever used a shimmer iron-on, and I absolutely love it. I will definitely be picking up more shimmer iron-on in the future. The other iron-on that I picked up is a solid navy. And then the tools needed to finish this project will be my iron, my weeding tool, scissors, and my Cricut mat. Now let's jump right into creating our design. We'll start by opening up a new project in Cricut Design Space, and we're going to click on Images. From here we're going to be looking for a football image. So there are thousands of different footballs here on Cricut Design Space. But since I'm going to be overlaying wording onto the football, I'm just looking for something that's a very simple and basic design. Once I find what I'm looking for, I'm just going to select it, and then I'm going to add it into my project. Now I'm just going to rotate it and make it a little bit larger. From here, we're going to add our wording. So I'm just going to click on text, and I'm going to type in Crusaders. Now I'm just going to change the font, and the font I'll be using today is Isabella. Isabella is a free font that can be found over at defont.com. So once you're on their website, just type in Isabella, and once you locate it, just click Download. From here, open up your downloaded files and select the TTF file and then install it onto your computer. You might need to restart your computer to make sure that the font was installed properly onto Cricut Design Space. Otherwise, you can just go right back to your design page and keep working. Now I'm just going to make Crusaders a little bit larger and I'm going to check the spacing of all of the letters. So I think that it looks pretty nice, but there's some spots that I'd like to bring the letters a little bit closer together. So there's two ways of doing this. We could use the letter spacing tool, but that will move all of the letters closer together and I don't wanna do that. So instead, I'm just going to go over and I'm going to ungroup the word and now I can move each of the letters independently. Once I'm happy with the letter spacing, I'm just going to highlight the whole thing and I'm going to click Weld. Now the word Crusaders is one single image and I can just easily move it around and place it onto the football. So now this is where we're going to create our knockout design. I'm going to use the offset feature. The offset feature is going to create a background layer behind your word. So you can make that background either larger or smaller by increasing or decreasing the distance in the offset feature. You will also have the choice between round or square corners but since I'm working with a football, I thought it would look nice to keep a round corner. Now just click apply, and you'll see that now your word has a background layer. So now we have three different layers. We have our text, we have the background layer, and we also have our football. So what we need to do is we're going to take the text of Crusaders and we're going to move it down out of our design. 
and then we're going to highlight the outline layer and the football and we're going to click slice. So the reason we needed to move down the text is because we can only slice two images at a time. So now that our image is sliced, we're just going to delete these pieces that were cut out. And then once we've deleted all of the pieces, then we can go in ahead and move our text of Crusaders back into that empty spot on the football. So this is what I was talking about of kind of creating a puzzle piece. Now I'm just going to adjust the colors so I can get a better idea of what my design will look like once it's cut out on the HTV. So I'm just going to change the football to brown and Crusaders to a navy blue. And then I just need to now adjust the size. So I'm just going to highlight the whole thing and I'm going to change the width to 8 inches. I'm not going to worry about the height of the design, I'm only going to focus on the width. And now once I've resized it, I'm just going to go up and click make it. So now that we're on the cutting page, this is one of the most important steps when working with iron-on, which is also known as HTV. So we need to make sure that we mirror the image. And we need to make sure that we're not only mirroring it for the first part of the project, but also the second, or however many layers that there are. So we're going to change it here for the football, and then go down and change it for Crusaders. And then we're going to double check, triple check, and then hit continue. Now I just need to set the material. I'll be using Everyday Iron-On for both the shimmer and the solid iron-on. Now when attaching the iron-on onto your Cricut mat, it's important to make sure that you're attaching it shiny side down. Now when attaching my navy, I'm also going to make sure that it's shiny side down, and since it's just a small strip and my mat isn't that sticky anymore, I'm going to use some masking tape to reinforce it to make sure it doesn't shift around when cutting. Now while the navy is cutting, I'm just going to get started on weeding out my football. Now I'll just weed out Crusaders. Something I like to do when working with iron-on is to assemble all of my layers before ironing them onto the shirt. I find that by doing it this way, I leave less room for air when I go to iron on each of the layers. Now to find the center of my shirt, I'm just going to fold it in half, and then I'll run my iron down the seam. Now I'm just going to center the design onto the shirt, and I'm going to place it about two inches down from the collar. So this is a youth shirt, and when I'm working with a youth shirt, I normally go anywhere between two to three inches down from the collar, but it just kind of depends on the design. Now we could just pull back this top layer, and then we'll iron on Crusaders. So as you can see, I'm just using an everyday iron for today's project. 
and the iron works fine, but I do feel like the Cricut Easy Press works so much better. So not only is it a lot faster, but I also feel like it's more fail proof. When using your iron, I feel like there's a lot of room for air because it's easy to shift your design. So when you're ironing, you're going back and forth and up and down, and it's really easy for your design just to get shifted even just a tiny bit to where it no longer looks perfect. It will work, but it won't be perfect. And if we're spending this much time and this much money on supplies, we want it to be perfect. So I feel like with the Easy Press, it's great because you're just putting it straight down and then lifting it straight up. So there's way less room for air and you're going to end up with a perfect project more often than not. Once both layers have been ironed on and we've peeled back the protective sheets, I like to just flip my shirt upside down and go over it quickly with some heat just to seal in those iron on layers. Now just flip your shirt back over and we are all done. So as you can see, creating a knockout design is actually super simple and it's an easy way to help elevate any of your designs or your projects to the next level. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and please subscribe if you are not already. Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, happy crafting.